Today, we're gonna to take a look at how you can back up a Docker container. And we're gonna be utilizing a Synology NAS to show the process. But the overall principles that we're showing today will work no matter what you're using to host your Docker containers. So what we're gonna do is work backwards. The first thing that I'm gonna show you right now is how I can log into the Unify controller. And this is just a Docker container that I have set up on my Synology NAS. And the key thing that you have to take away here is that I'm able to authenticate. I'm able to use my username and my password to log into the application. So shifting back to our Synology NAS, which is where we have our Docker container hosted, I went in and I stopped the container. And I'm gonna show you here by editing the container, the volume section. So what you're gonna see is that I mapped the containers folder, forward slash unify, which is on the right-hand side here, to the left-hand side, which is my local storage that's on my Synology NAS, and I mapped it to the Docker folder, and I have a subfolder inside of that called Unify Controller. Now, depending on the operating system that you're using, you probably have this in a local storage location somewhere, but you have to ensure that you can access that folder. And the reason for that is because this is kind of the brains of the actual container, and these are considered mount points. So what we're doing is we're mounting the containers unify folder forward slash unify to the local storages unify controller folder that is stored inside of the docker folder now when that container runs what it's going to do is it's going to take the data from this forward slash unify location and it's going to write it to our local storage so if i open up file station here and i go to docker and i go to unify controller you're going to see that i have two folders that exist here the data inside of these folders is basically all of my personalized information. So to summarize this as quickly as I possibly can, if you wanna back up your Docker container, you have to back up the folder locations that you mounted. So keep in mind that different Docker containers will have different mount paths, and you're gonna to have to make sure that you back up all of those folders. But if you do back up all those folders, you can be certain that your Docker container is backed up. So to show you a very simple backup example, Inside of Hyper Backup, that's a Synology NAS application, I went ahead and I created a backup task called Docker Containers. And then I went inside of there and I selected that Docker container, the top level folder. This just ensures that if I ever create any additional Docker containers and I put it inside of that Docker folder, it will automatically back up as well. Now you have to keep in mind that if you're using an operating system that doesn't have Hyper Backup or doesn't have a specified backup tool, you're gonna to have to use something like rsync or, or just about anything to ensure that you're able to get the data inside of those folders somewhere else. Now in this example, all I'm doing is just backing it up to a separate folder on this Synology NAS. It's just a test environment. If you're actually setting this up, you wanna make sure that you're backing it up to a different location, preferably a different machine. If the data is very important to you, preferably multiple copies with at least one offsite but you have to do your due diligence to ensure that you're using best practices for your backups. So at this point, we went through and we logged into our Unify controller application. After that, we stopped the container and we looked at the Docker containers mount points. So we know the important information that had to be backed up for this container. We then looked at Hyper Backup and we actually backed up this folder location to a different folder on this NAS. And now we're gonna take a look at exactly how Docker uses those mount points. So to show that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to delete the Unify Controller subfolders. So in this case, it is the data folder and it's the logs folder. So now with those two folders gone, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start up the Docker container. At this point, it is gonna recreate that Docker container from scratch because nothing exists. So the very important thing that you have to take away here is if you have data inside of a folder and you're mapping that data from a local location to that container, it will read the contents of that folder. If the data does not exist, which is this example, the data does not exist, and you start the container, it will create the data on that local location. So giving the container a few minutes to create, if I go to the same web address that I was at before, you're gonna see that it's bringing me straight to the setup portion. And the reason is because nothing exists for this Docker container. We just, in essence, created a blank Docker container. So with that in mind, we can now take a look at how you can restore it. And to do that, we have to shift back to our Synology at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna delete those two folders again, 
because this is a brand new container. This doesn't have any of our information. And what I'm gonna do at that point is I'm gonna open up Hyper Backup and I'm gonna restore that folder back to its local location. So now this is the exact same data that we had before when we were able to log in. So after the restore process is done, you're gonna see that that folder contains our data and our log folder again. So like I said earlier, keep in mind that if data exists in that folder, the Docker container will read that information. So when we restart this container at this point, keep in mind that absolutely nothing has changed. All we've done is change the folder contents inside of that mount path. But when we restart this container and we navigate to the web page, you're going to see that I can log in again. So in essence, we just completed a backup and a restore of a Docker container. And that's the best part about Docker containers is that they're so portable. And if you're still having a hard time understanding this, try to think of it from a PC perspective. This is the easiest example I can come up with. If you have a blank Windows operating system and you have all of your documents inside of that documents folder, you have no important information on this PC other than the data that exists in that documents folder. If you go forward and you back up that one folder and the hard drive was to crash for whatever reason, and you were to get a new hard drive and now you have a blank hard drive, you have nothing on it. If you were to then go ahead and you were to reinstall that Windows operating system and you take the documents that existed from your backup and you restore them to that Windows operating system, you have the exact system that you had before. You didn't back up the entire operating system, you just backed up your documents because that's the only important data that you have. In its simplest form, that's really all that a Docker container does. It is running the application and it's allowing you to back up the important information that you own from that container itself. It then allows you to take that data and you can port it to a different system or you can port it to the same system if you had some type of data loss or whatever it is, but that will allow you to restart the existing container or recreate the container with the exact same settings, which will force it to read your information, whether that's your username, your password, or some of your configuration, etc but it will force it to read all of that information and your Docker container will be exactly as it was on that different device or before that data loss. Now, like I said earlier, you have to keep in mind that this is just one example. And in this one example, we have one mount point. But if you have a container that has three, four, five mount points, you have to make sure that you're backing all of them up. And there might be data that you're mapping that isn't particularly important. In this example, maybe you look at the logs and say, hey, these aren't important to me. But the important thing is that you're backing up the data that you need. So you have to take this on a case by case, container by container basis. Overall, it's probably best just to back up everything. But if you know for certain that you don't need the log files and they do nothing for the container, then you might wanna skip them. But I've received a bunch of questions on this and I'm hoping that this helped clarify it at least a little bit. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If the video helped you out, give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to this channel if you like content like this. Thanks guys.